here is a small update. I have just fitted um, these drawers. I realised I had these lying around um, in a cabin and uh, just working out storage things. So this all slides out. I've got so much room, so much room for clothes and that's going to be my clothes space. And that's all secured behind here. And um, yeah, I've just been testing, seeing how things fit. That's going to be where my cookery stuff goes. I've got my portaloo in there and there's a huge gap for another box or something to go in there. And what I've also got is this table and I used an old bracket off of an old caravan table that was no good um, with the foldable leg and I fixed this here so that when the door's shut I have a table complete just here. Just to show you this table out it fits perfectly right here and um, so that will give me the um, space to just come and do all my if I've got any if I've got my laptop out or if, I've, if I'm preparing food I can put my induction hub on here and all sorts so I've got a proper table proper functional table and I'm probably going to try and secure it into this space so that when I'm traveling I can just do that but to be honest if I leave it up I can probably drive with that out no problems but uh, but yeah this is perfect I can just sit here if there's a nice view over there I can sit here do what I need to do and um, yeah, this should be much more comfortable than the sleeping pod. I was completely cramped in that, trying to do anything in there. Whereas this is much, much, much more relaxed. And um, I've just got to get some hooks put up in here for coats and things like that. And um, we're almost there, we're almost there. I'm just sorting out storage space and things like that and figuring out where, figuring out where I'm going to put everything. Right, so there we go. I found this old strap that I had lying around, so I fixed it into there. I've put this onto here so that it doesn't rattle when it's moving, because it was rattling a bit. But there we go. Table is secure, and that is where that will live when not in use. So that is perfect. Um, not much more to do now. Not much more to do. Okay, so I have put these hooks up now so that gives me a lot of hanging space in here so now I just do that and there uh, somewhere to hang my coats and things like that and so here we are just making use of all the storage space absolutely possible um, now this little bit here doesn't get awfully hot so people have put boxes in here um, for storing their EV cable so that's the plan I'm going to leave that box here and this is where I'm going to keep all my cables when I'm going away and um, traveling and it just keeps it out of the cargo space and there we go so we're just going to do that I've just put a small bracket down here onto the battery thing just to keep it just to keep it solid in place and um, yeah so there's my EV my EV cable storage. It's a shame they didn't build anything into here because there's so much space. They could have easily built some kind of, or even onto the bottom of the boot there, where, uh, on the bottom of the bonnet, um, someone put a cargo net for storing things. So I might do that as well. But, um, but yeah, there we go. That's my temporary, or possibly permanent, storage space for um, all my cables. So I have just gotten myself one of these OBD um, two units and uh, what this does is it goes into the port down here and you can access the stats of your vehicle um, through the LeafSpy app and it's a bit up and down which units work. Um, however, there was some reviews on Amazon for this particular OBD2 thing, and it is only it was only ten pounds. So no, it's sixteen pounds. This one was. So that's not a bad price considering it's so hard to find one that does work properly. Um, so I'll link that in the description, and you can go ahead and buy one if you do have a Leaf or you have an ANV and you need one of these little gadgets. Now, as it does work through the phone, I cannot show you what goes on 
on the screen but I will put a photo in place in a moment just now okay so as you can see I decided to download this screen recorder to show you exactly what's going on in real time so um, <clears throat> what I will do later on in the video is I'll calculate the um, state of charge uh, health um, and how much it degraded over eight years. But as you can see, so from this, from the left at the top where it says battery stats AHR, you have um, I think that was 51, 57 amp hours uh, left in the battery. You got state of health, which is the overall health of the battery pack, um, 87.17 and you can see the voltage in the corner 379.9 volts 09 volts and then just below that you've got your um, VIN number I'm not sure what that HX is it says 83.50% now something that I was a bit confused about was this HX value um, there's not much clear information on it but it can vary a lot um, whereas mine was around 83% I believe which according to what all of this says is actually kind of good but um, let's see if I can scroll down to where I saw some sort of an explanation just here um, as people said the HX is conductance of your battery pack relative to nominal 100% um, the lower the conductance the less power the battery can take or deliver the unit conductance is uh, Siemens but the HX is a dimensionless number the drop in conductance is caused by growth of solid electrolyte interface which is mostly driven by high temperature and high state of charge so letting the car sit at 100 percent in heat is not good for hx um, it typically drops faster than soh but it has much less impact on the utility of the vehicle because the impact of range is quite small so unless your hx is below 50 percent i wouldn't worry too much um, but the main effect is this, this, this low limited power and that. So I don't know if this is the exact explanation for it or if this is exactly what it is. But it's the closest thing I can find online in relation to what HX means. So in relation to that, looking at what, how mine compares on LeafSpy, it is in a very good it is in a very good place. What I really find interesting is on just on that level where the Odo is on the right, it says, so the QC is for quick charge and the L1 and L2 is the 3 kilowatt and the 6.6 .6 kilowatt chargers. And um, what you can see here is that this car has, this van has only had 10 quick charges, 10 rapid charges in its lifetime, which isn't a lot, which is kind of good. And it's only, it's only had 128, excuse the train. That's the only thing next to this place is this train line <laughs> and it has to be busy while I'm making a video. Right, okay, so um, 128 level 1 and level 2 charges, that is what this car has had. Now below that you can see this chart which um, shows you the battery balancing and if there is any active balancing it will show in red but you can see, um, you can see uh, how close the batteries are within level which isn't too bad actually there's one cell there that's at the end that seems to be worse off than the others and I think I press something here at the bottom there we go it switches over and what you can actually see is the max voltage difference is 23 millivolts which is not bad at all so the minimum voltage histogram at the top says 3.937 volts the average is 3.9 Point three nine point five. This is where my charge is at the moment. I'm not fully charged, and um, max is three point nine six. So this is a very well balanced pack, a very well balanced pack. And then at the bottom, it tells you your state of charge. It shows you the voltage of your main battery, your car battery, um, and then and the state of charge is right here at the bottom. So you can see the state of charge that your pack is at. Right, so what I also forgot to mention is the temperature at the bottom here. So as I say, you can see the... I'll turn the car on now so the voltage is higher. But you can see um, at the bottom, you also see the temperature of the cells. So they're around 12 degrees centigrade at the moment, which is good. Um, but yeah, so I think that's three different packs. And I think they, they must be split into three, perhaps, which is why they're reading three and then the average discrepancy between them. Um, but no, so that's the other part I forgot to mention, is that you can see the temperature, the exact temperature 
in real time, which is kind of cool. And um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. And um, yep, yeah, as you can see, the battery is in perfect health for its age of eight years. You do get some degradation on the cells. Um, but yes, yeah, say so that, that's that, that's that. And um, I did do the calculation already, so I will mention it here. So 87.717%, it's about 13% um, degradation. That works out at about 1.6. That works out at about 1.6% um, degradation per year, which is not bad at all, not bad at all. Even with the car sitting, it does degrade. And the lowest you really want to go is around 70%. So calculating it based on another 17% at 1.6% because I'm not going to use I'm going to use the car for a bit of traveling but when I'm local journeys most of the time so it's not going to be working too hard and um, so I've got about another 8 to 10 years I've got based on this I've got about another 8 to 10 years um, lifespan on this car so that's not bad at all by that point I probably will have upgraded to a 40 kilowatt hour battery so um, plenty plenty of health what you will um, see is that the state of charge is around 87 is around 87 um, percent so if I turn that on which I'm, I'm surprised because uh, I mean I'm not surprised actually because it is eight years old that it degrades even if um, even if it's been sitting but when you this the battery capacity has still got 12 bars so unless it loses a bar once it hits 80 percent i do not know but um that still has 12 bars and the battery health is at 87 percent but that's giving me around 70 miles range which isn't bad and the beauty with this little leaf spy um this not leaf spy with this little one is that it's so compact i just do that and it can stay it can stay constantly hooked up in the car and I can just jump on my phone whenever I need to uh, want to or have a look at the stats but um, yeah so there we go I wanted it mainly so that I could find my battery state of charge I mean state of health I wanted to see the exact figure to see um, exactly where I'm at with this battery because it is it is eight years old it's been sitting in the car even though the car's hardly been used um, they tend to lose around one to two percent a year anyway. Um, that's good news. 87% is a good figure considering the age of this battery. Um, and especially if it's been left sitting at fully charged for eight years. I don't know, I don't know what state of charge they left this at. Um, and it's just not been doing anything for eight years. So um, there we go, there we go. That is the state of charge of this battery. And if you did want to get one of these little gadgets... As I said, I will link it in the description. It's, um, it works perfectly. It costs a fraction of the price of some of the ones out there that do work as well. So um, it just saves you a few pennies and it fits in there and stays compact in that compartment. And you can always access it. You can always check things. So yeah, there we go. What a great little gadget.